Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday's edition of Upper Michigan Today. Tia is on her last <laughs> weekday of vacation, so we have meteorologist Jennifer Perez in with us this morning. Always so good when you can yes. join us on the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming on. How are you? How was your week? It's been. It's been. It's been. I'm, I'm exhausted. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Big plans of sleeping this weekend yeah. then? Yes, absolutely. Recharging? Yes. Well, it's been kind of crazy. It was like last week was a bit of a mess too with the scheduling stuff and then, mm -hmm. you know, this week too. For those folks who don't know, I just, just joined the Leadership Academy with uh, Lake Superior Community Partnership. Yeah. We had a retreat last week and so had a day yesterday and so I'm like on little sleep today. And I bet you're just learning a ton too. So your, your brain has been firing and mm -hmm. so that's another level of... Whew, that's a Exhaustion. lot. Exhaustion. Yeah. A lot of presentations, a lot of great information. Yesterday we toured uh, the BLP UPCO. We heard from Enbridge, mm. which was really great. And we toured the wastewater facility in Marquette too. So learned a lot of cool things. Yeah. Is there a big, uh, what's your biggest takeaway so far? Do you have a little tidbit you want to share? I don't know. I just think it's great. It's a great opportunity to yeah. learn more. I was fascinated by how uh, it, the wastewater treatment plant has kind of this um, self-sustaining system where essentially the final waste product they sell off to like the Tilden Mine or mm. like local farmers. So it, I think it's really good because it helps grow grass in our area and areas that might need it. Yeah. Um, but also in their clearing of the water phase, they use a lot of bacteria to kind of eat away at the gunk and the bad stuff. And apparently you could actually see it happening. Wow. It goes from like clear to the top to muddy and then like dark at the bottom mm. so I was just fascinated by that. Yeah, yeah. It is fascinating. Very yeah. cool. Well, a lot I'm of great information. Yeah I'm really excited that you get to have that experience. I've known a lot of people that have gone through that program and come out the other side just really excited yeah. at, at all they've learned and the people they've met along the way. So um, good for you. Thanks. Very cool. Yeah. I'm excited to kind of keep on your journey with that. But uh, let's take a look outside Jennifer like we always do every day here is Marquette. I'm gonna let you tell us what's happening oh, out well, there. Oh well you know it's still cloudy. Mm -hmm. um, we're hanging on to clouds out there so kind of still looks a little overcast in Marquette but we'll get some sunshine. It's coming. It's, it's just coming. Gonna, okay. It's gonna take a couple hours. We're gonna have some sunshine later on this afternoon. I have the sunglasses ready. Do you really? Oh, I yeah. always keep mine handy. In fact <laughs> I even wear my sunglasses on cloudy days. Um, <laughs> and it kind of looks the same over at yeah. Hotel in and uh, as well as over at Hancock but you know we're in for two nice really nice days so. that's great mm -hmm. that's great it's always great to hear that on a Friday that we're in for a couple of nice days yes it yeah is. it's a good way to start the weekend you know what else is a good way to start the weekend if you're a Lions fan just waking up this morning was good hey 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 yeah. they beat the Kansas City Chiefs last night 21 to 20 it was the NFL season opener you know there was so much hype around this game everyone says this is the year for the Lions they have like those little glimmers last year and ended the season on a high. And uh, it, so this was kind of the moment where, is it everything that we think it's going to be? And I mean. It looks like it's a sign. It, it has, has, to, be has sign. to be a sign. It's a sign from the universe that, you know, they're gonna do a whole lot better this year. Kansas City did have a couple of big injuries, a couple of players that didn't play last night, but you know, um, it doesn't matter. They won, we're excited, mm -hmm. there's a real excitement. And you know what I think is great also, it doesn't even matter if you're not a Detroit fan. Yeah. This morning you woke up excited. Yes. Like it, yeah. they are the team that we just are all rooting for. <laughs> like let's do this, let's like go. Like the underdog, it's yeah. It's so good. So congrats. Congrats to all those yeah. that don't have a voice and stayed up too late and are feeling all tired <laughs> today. Well worth it, I would say. Okay, and Jennifer, this is a story that I wanted to share I with you <laughs> because to be honest. I think it is just <laughs> How what, is this even a thing? <laughs> uh, there's so many things, right? <laughs> but in Pennsylvania, obviously, we, mm -hmm. we will rely on the groundhog to tell us when winter is going to end. Tuxatani Phil. That's right. Yeah. But in Maine, they rely on a lobster to predict when winter will begin. <laughs> so his name is Passy Pete. <laughs> and every Labor Day at 10 a.m., he's been doing this for nine years now, they pull a lobster named Pete from the river. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say that river. Do you have a, do you have any knowledge of that? That's nope. a big one. Okay, so they pull it from a river. We'll call it a river. <laughs> and um, he determines, you know, what's what's going to happen. So apparently through a gift of clairvoyance, that's, that's what they're <laughs> attributing his, you know, skills to. And he says winter is coming. No, wait, what did he say? It's coming early. It's he said coming it's coming early. early. Yes. So 
What do you think? Do you think he's, do you think the lobster's on point? I don't know. I don't think so. Can you even predict if it's, no, no you can't. I mean, you can predict trends, yeah. you know, and for what we know right now, we're in a strong El Nino phase. Okay. Um, so if you don't know a whole lot about that, Enzo is a contributing factor to uh, the pressures between the ocean currents and the atmospheric circulations that we have. Which here we go, here we go. Some people's heads. <laughs> but um, essentially, equal signs to changes in the jet stream. Okay, okay. And so when you have changes to the jet stream pattern, that impacts, like you know, essentially how the winter will go, where the storm tracks are going to be, maybe potentially how much moisture there's going to be to work with, and, and that kind of a thing. Okay. How cold or how warm, and with it being kind of a strong El Nino phase, then it looks like right now. We're gonna have generally a uh, milder and essentially drier winter. So, so you would maybe that's go the setup. Um, opposite of the lobster. Yes. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Who's gonna be right? The lobster we're or gonna, Perez? We're gonna find Passy out. Peter Perez. You know, we <laughs> should start our own tradition. We should. Here. So, what do you think? We were talking about this before the show. What would our what would our ritual be? What would our you know what what should we create? Would it be a deer? I think it's a, a deer. Bear? You think it's a deer? I think it has to be a deer. Yeah. Yeah. And what does the deer do? I have no idea. Okay, that's the <laughs> next question, right? Like, what do we put the deer? What what kind of no, a no course clue. do we put the deer through? <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna have to think on that. Tell us your ideas. You were talking maybe a fish. Maybe salmon, trout, a trout. Like white trout, fish, maybe. white fish, maybe. Definitely not moose. We'll leave the moose to the Canadians. How far does a trout make it up a river on yeah. a certain day? I have no that, idea. I mean, there's so many options. I think right? that I think that we can recruit people from the DNR to help us with this. Probably, plan. Yeah. probably. Yeah. Or we just make it up ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and we put all your scientific goodness with it and make us sound really smart. <laughs> all right. And the final story that we want to talk about this morning. I think this is wild. I've heard about this. We've had people in the newsroom say. Tia, Elizabeth, you guys should do a show on the one chip challenge. And I have said, absolutely not. I am not into that because it is a really spicy chip. And maybe you all know about it. You can buy, it's just, they sell it in one, okay? It's one chip. It's described as the spiciest chip in the world. It has seasoning from a Carolina Reaper pepper and a Viper pepper. That's so insane. it's hot. It's uh -uh. hot. But what happened is... Um, this is supposed to only be for adults, mm -hmm. but a teenager did did the challenge and died. And it's not confirmed yet exactly what the cause of death was, but they pulled all of the chips off the shelf because while there is a warning on there saying it's only for adults, the company says, you know, teens aren't paying attention and they're taking right. this challenge. So um, certainly a serious situation there. But, you know, something like this, I'm not interested no, in it. No, what, what's fun about it? I just I, don't understand what, what's fun about putting yourself through torture. And you don't know how your body's going right, to adapt to it. Right. You know? So, I mean, 50 50, you're going to get okay, or 50 50, you're going to end up at the hospital. Yeah. Do you like those Scary. chances? No, I'm good. Anyway, if you've done it, or maybe you were going to do it. You're out of luck right now yeah. because uh, the company says, hey, we're meeting all the food safety standards, so everything that we're doing is right. We have the warning, but mm -hmm. obviously they need to maybe uh, look at the why a yeah. little harder. I don't, I don't know. Because I'm not sure why anybody's doing that, but no more we're no good. more chip challenge and we're no. not doing a umt on the chip challenge i'm so glad to hear that you're not recruiting me for that i'm not doing <laughs> it I, I love spicy you love spicy i do but i know my limit well, my limit is probably habanero so and I, I don't even know what a viper pepper is. I have no idea. Psh, yeah. I don't want to know. That sounds too too intense. All right. Well, we're excited for today's show. Uh, we have the president of Michigan Tech in with us in the studio. And we're going to be talking about this school year. But we're also going to take a moment to really get to know who he is outside of the office. And um, I've already learned a ton. Yeah. And he's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, stick around. Uh, we're getting into that just after the break.